How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video. Today we're making something really special with whole wheat flour. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. I recently made a video about the no-knead bread with a hydration of 100%, but that one was made with white flour. As soon as I published that video, people started asking me about the whole wheat version. And this is it. A 100% whole wheat, 100% hydration, no-knead bread. It is super light and soft. It's moist and it's got loads of flavor from the whole wheat flour. Just think about all the delicious toppings that would go on this. It's kind of like a ciabatta, but less crusty. The best part about it is that it's super easy to make. We'll just mix the dough, give it a few folds, ferment it, divide it in half, ferment it again and bake it. And it will only take about three hours. All right, here's what we'll need. Some whole wheat flour, yeast, salt, olive oil and water. And that is 13% protein flour I'm using here. Now as for the equipment, we'll need a tray, but not for baking. The dough will be fermented in the tray. The main reason for not using a bowl is because we want these loaves to be nice and square. Saying that, we will need a bowl for mixing the dough in. We'll also need scales, a dough scraper and a temperature probe. We'll also need a piece of baking paper. This will make it easier to get the loaves in the oven. And to slide them in the oven, I'm going to use my pizza paddle. You could use a flat tray or a cookie sheet, or just ferment and bake the loaves on a tray. It would be best to bake them on a thick solid surface, like a pizza steel or a pizza stone. The next best thing would be a thick metal tray. The heat from a tray like this will make the loaves jump up as they hit the oven. Right, so we can start making this dough. This time I'm using warm water. Because we're not kneading this dough, it will not warm up anymore. So this time using warm water is appropriate. Grab a large bowl, add the water, the yeast and the salt. We will not be adding the oil at this point. Grab a spatula or a whisk and stir. You want to hydrate the yeast and dissolve the salt completely. If you are using sea salt flakes like I am, this may take up to a minute. Once you don't feel the salt scraping against the bottom of the bowl anymore, add the flour. Now mix until there's no more dry flour left and then keep mixing for another minute. Mixing it for a little bit longer will get some gluten going. I know there are some people out there who would tell me right now that this is not a no knead recipe anymore. Some people even say that folding counts as kneading. I personally think that if a bread is made by hand and the dough doesn't leave the bowl, it's a no-need recipe. Right, enough about that, let's check the temperature, 24 degrees Celsius, just about right for this. And that is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we can start fermenting. Take your tray and pour the oil in the tray. The oil will be folded into the dough. This will give it a better chance of getting some gluten strength. If we had mixed the oil in from the get-go, it would make it a bit looser. Also greasing the tray will make it easier to fold this dough. I pour the dough into the tray and leave it to ferment for 20 minutes. Now we can give it its first fold. The first fold will be different from the following ones. You could call this a bowl fold. Wet your hand with some water so the dough doesn't stick to it. Then lift the dough up and fold it over the middle. And go around in a circle a couple of times until it's nice and tight. Once you can't fold it no more, flip it smooth side up so that the seam is on the bottom. This will prevent it from coming undone. Now that's the first fold out of four done. Now we can cover it up, leave it to ferment for another 20 minutes. And from now on, we will be performing coil folds. You still want to wet your hands with water so they don't stick. Now gently release the dough from the tray. You want to lift it up by the middle. As you lift it, stretch it upwards. And then throw it forward to roll it underneath itself. And that is why it's called a coil fold. We are rolling it up. Roll it a couple times on one side, then turn the tray around and repeat on the other side. Then you can turn it 90 degrees and do those loose ends as well. And once it's shaped into a nice tight package, you're done. That is the first coil fold. By the way, I have a whole episode about folding in the Steps of Baking playlist, so check it out after you watch this video. Okay, let's cover this once again, leave it to ferment for another 20 minutes. It is fermenting quite rapidly. Second coil fold is performed exactly the same as the first one. And here's a better look at it. You can see how I'm rolling the dough underneath itself. It is important to note that every subsequent fold needs to be performed more gently than the previous one. As the dough is fermenting, it's becoming more fragile. And if you manhandle it, you might knock out those fermentation gases. Okay, we'll give this another 20 minutes and then the final fold. After the final coil fold, we'll cover it up and leave it to ferment for 40 minutes. You can see how much stronger the dough is now. A few folds really work wonders. And if we had not folded this at all, it would be a pancake. Right now it's final shaping time. And it is quite like shaping a ciabatta. All we need to do is divide this dough. You can do this on the table, but to not make a mess, I like to use a tray. 
dust it heavily with flour and then turn the dough out onto it. Next up, dust the bottom of the dough as well. And don't be shy with the flour here, it is very sticky. Stretch it a bit, move it around a bit, make sure it's nice and straight, well, as straight as it can be. It doesn't have to be perfect, but some gentle shaping will make it nice and uniform. I'm making two large loaves, you could cut this into four if you like. Don't hesitate when you're using your scraper, just press it right down to the tray. Make sure the dough is separated before moving on. As soon as you've cut it open, dust the cut as well. It'll just make it easier to handle and make sure that it doesn't stick to anything. Don't worry if it's looking a little bit wonky at the moment. We will have a chance to straighten it out and make it nice and square. Right now we need to move these to the baking paper. You want to be quite gentle. Push the dough together as you pick it up and then stretch it out as you lay it down. This will ensure that it doesn't stretch out by itself whilst you are carrying it from the tray to the paper. You want to leave quite a big gap between them. They will spread out a bit as they ferment. There is still a final proofing step before we bake them. Take the excess flour from the tray or from your table and sprinkle it onto the loaves. It will stop them from sticking to whatever you're covering them with. The final proofing time will take around 40 to 60 minutes, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. During this time you want to preheat your oven to 230 degrees Celsius, fan off. That's about 445 degrees Fahrenheit. And don't forget to preheat your baking vessel too, be it your pizza stone, pizza tray, cast iron pan or just a regular baking tray. Dusting the loaves before baking is optional, and if you can't decide, dust one and then see which result you like better. Now here's our final chance to make these nice and square. Simply use your dough scraper to straighten out the sides. This of course is not necessary, they will be perfectly fine and beautiful if you don't do it. If you want you can bake these with steam, it will produce a crispier crust. I wanted to keep things super easy this time. So dry oven it is, and they'll take around 20 minutes. And that's with steam or without. And just look at that, they are puffing up beautifully. Don't expect great volume here, these are flatbreads after all. And just look how big they are. This recipe contains 250 grams of flour. That means one loaf only has 125 grams of flour. It is huge. Just by looking at them, you would think that they contain double the amount of flour. They are so light, they're basically empty inside. And that's in a good way, of course. Let's have a closer look at the interior real quick. Look how squishy it is. It is so light that tearing it feels like tearing a sponge cake. I'm definitely making this one again. It is far superior than the white flour version. Saying that, I do like the other one too. It's bread. It's all good, right? So what do you think this recipe? And have you tried something like this before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.